I'm Chantal. I'm a retired physician and I'm a moon gardener. Lunar gardening is something that's been going on for centuries. Farmers have developed it, but it's become more of a quote-unquote science. I started planting according to the lunar cycles. I have found that by putting it into practice, things grow much faster <laughs> than they would otherwise. And I think what it's got to do is got to do with putting yourself in sync with the rhythms of the seasons and the rhythms of the earth and the rhythms of planting. And I think that when you put yourself in sync with the seasons, when you're in touch with nature, you feel different. You are more grounded. It's a different feeling. And I think that that's what permeates this garden. As a result of the fact that this garden is on a street corner, there's a lot of foot traffic around it. I don't have a fence, so it doesn't make any sense for me to try to keep things to myself. So it was almost out of necessity that I created a garden that's open to the community. This just happens to be where I can garden, so I'm gardening out front. That necessity pulled me out of myself. It pulled me out of my depression. It put me back in touch with the community. And now, a lot of different things have grown out of it. I put out this little stand, which has become an exchange. When I have excess produce, I put it in there. People can pick it up. When people have excess stuff from the neighborhood, they'll come in, they'll put it there. And, you know, it's just a really nice way for people to share what they've got. Started the garden on this little plot right here, which is about, I think, 10 by 20 feet. And that was the very first garden. Everything else, when I started gardening, was lawn, except for just a little border over here. And when I first started gardening, it was not really in my mind to do anything other than just to plant a few flowers and to have a, a pretty garden. But the real urge to garden and this particular garden came about after I got really sick. I hurt my back and had a couple of uh, spine operations and uh, the recovery was very, very difficult and long. I was on a lot of medication, became very, very depressed and um, just found really a very hard time motivating myself to do anything. I had so much pain I couldn't stand for very long to do anything inside the house. It was hard to imagine that I could even do anything outside. But I had this urge. It was like a elemental force that said, come and do this. You can do this. I didn't listen at first because it seemed impossible when I couldn't stand up to cook a meal. How was I gonna, you know, come out and build a garden? But that voice wouldn't stop. It just said, yeah, you can do this. You can do this. Come out and garden. One day, I remembered that I had this little stool that rolled around and I put on my back brace and I slipped an ice pack in, in the back here. And I came out and before I knew it, I had cleared up the space. And within a few days, I had actually, I planted my very first garden and I got enough vegetables out of that very first garden to share with a lot of people. And that's what got me going. This part is the herb garden. And I always, tell my students, if you're gonna have an herb garden, you must put it really, really close to, the, to your front door. It has to be just within a few steps so that when you want something, you can walk out, clip it, and walk back inside. So I've got parsley, oregano, all of my culinary herbs, but I also grow some medicinal herbs. I've got lemon balm, I've got lemon verbena, feverfew, and I like to make my own soaps and I make my own creams and lotions. 
So I use the herbs and the flowers from the garden to infuse oils and then from those oils, I make the different products. And I use, there's a, that's pretty much what we use for the whole family. I make enough so that I can ship out to the whole, to, to my family at Christmas time. And that's my Christmas gift. So. Lavender is one of my favorite plants. It's one of my favorite scents. I think it's really calming. If you've got any kind of anxiety, you want to have lavender growing in your garden. And certainly as a stress reliever, it's just a wonderful scent. Um, this is French lavender and I propagated it and grew a whole hedge out of that one plant. It's one of the things I taught during the class. And I specifically created a path from one side to the other to encourage people to come through the garden and to wander and to cut through and to sit down if they wish. I have a lot of uh, fruit trees growing. This is my guava tree, and you can see some guavas. We'll have, we're gonna be making guava jelly this year. This is a satsuma um, tangerine. That's a mango tree right there. We gave some beautiful mangoes. And there's a cherry moya tree, a couple of pear trees, and um, plum and nectarine. We've always got kale growing, and I like to keep the kale right in front because I encourage people to pick it themselves, and the kids love to come by and pull the kale and just chew on it. This is my vegetable exchange stand. People will bring things that they, that they have extras of, and whenever I have any extras, I'll put it in there, and whatever is there, the, the neighborhood partakes. I have a few more beans growing. So this was loaded up with beans. You can see they're really drying up and I've left them on the, on the vine to dry up because I want the seeds for next year. So I don't have to go and buy any more seeds. I just collect the, the dry seed pods. Yeah, you wait till they're completely dry. And then I will use those seeds for my next year's crop. Happy and that little thing, that little pole with the can at the top, that's where I put peanuts for my friend Blue Jay. And he comes and eats the peanuts, but he stays around and eats the bugs too. So I encourage him to visit the garden because that's my pest control. <laughs> I've got bird feeders hanging all through the garden for that's for the same reason, because you bring the birds to your garden they will help you out by eating, eating the insects. Today with the children of the neighborhood, we planted the box. And this is our winter vegetable box. So we planted kale, lettuce, broccoli, onions, there's cauliflower, and there are flowers growing to attract beneficial insects all throughout the box. At the bottom, it's full of logs, so it's called a hugel culture um, because it's very expensive to fill a box with a lot of soil, and you can get away by putting a bunch of uh, twigs and grasses and any, everything at the bottom. Yeah, put about four inches of soil, and that's all you need to grow. And as things go along, the branches will decompose and actually rot and turn into soil. So. That's what's going on with this box. We planted a, a bunch of trees along the parkway now that we have gotten permission to grow food on the parkways. So I've got citrus growing on the parkway. The, the outside of the garden is not irrigated at all. And only depends on whether I water it or, or the weather waters it. And that's because it's meant to be a permaculture garden. So it should not really depend on watering. It's, it's hard to maintain at first, but once you get it going, you just have absolutely no worries. It just keeps itself going. So um, it may not uh, be obvious to put roses, but roses are actually really hardy. They are drought tolerant and they will reward you with a profusion of flowers whenever it starts to rain again. So. I find them good plants to intersperse. 
Well, these are my favorite roses, and I plant roses in remembrance of people. So, you know, when I lose a friend or a, a family relative, I will plant a rose bush. In, so there's a rose bush. This is my aunt's rose bush. She likes yellow roses. And there's one planted for my mother. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, it's just my way of keeping their memory alive. So. I have one more plant that, in terms of memory and keeping things alive, is really important to me that I'd like to show you. So, it's up over here and it's right by my door. It's not a very showy plant at all. And it doesn't look fabulous but it means a lot. Okay, so this aloe plant was given to me as a gift from a family that has preserved it since the Middle Passage. This particular plant made it through the Middle Passage, was smuggled aboard ship by a slave. It was grown in the fields of America that family escaped to freedom to Canada. They took the plant with them and grew it over there. Some of them came back to the United States. They came to Maryland. They brought the plant to Maryland. And some of them moved to, not too far from here, a few blocks away from here. And I was lucky enough to get a piece of it. We don't have very many things to connect us to our past. There's a big block that's, you know, been taken away from us and to have anything that you can touch that carries the memory of your ancestors be there not even blood related to me is this is my talisman it's it's amazing to have this it's just amazing I take my inspirations from some people that I really admire uh, Vandana Shiva is one of my heroes she uh, started the seed saving movement in northern India after um, the epidemic of pharma suicides up there. And she has been a real force against Monsanto. Um, she established um, an organization that has uh, really revitalized seed saving and heirloom seeds in India and really um, it's an amazing woman she, so she's one of my uh, inspirations she says that to to garden to produce your own food is a revolutionary act because right now we are so enslaved by our systems our food production systems the way that they've been set up um, there's very there's not enough response to demand. And our food, you know, is shipped from all over the place. So all, you don't know what's on it. You don't know what pesticides are on it, what preservatives. Half the time it's been picked before it's ripe and it's been, you know, subjected to gas in order to ripen it artificially. It's not real nutritious food. And it's really, really important, I think, um, to everyone to get their hands in the dirt and to get back to growing something, whatever it is, on your balcony, wherever you can find some open space, a little bit of sunshine, grow something. It'll make you better. It'll make your life better.